Fat Mary, Princess of Cambridge and great-grandmother of Elizabeth II. She is already 32 years old and she is still not married and besides, she is so fat, thought Princess Augusta, looking disapprovingly at her youngest daughter. Meanwhile, Marie Adelaide, who has a wonderful appetite, devoured one delicious pan after another. Yes, this British princess was indeed fat and not too attractive. But she had a cheerful and open character, and despite all her mother's fears, she was able to get married happily, and her eldest daughter later became the Queen of England. Marie Adelaide was born into the family of Duke Adolf, the seventh son of King George III of England and the German Princess Augusta of Hesse Castle. A girl was born in 1833 in Hanover. By right of birth, Marie Adelaide, as the granddaughter of the English king, received the title of Princess of Cambridge. The baby had an older brother and a sister. The girl spent her infancy in Germany, as her father at that time ruled Hanover on behalf of the English kings. In 1837, when Queen Victoria ascended to the English throne, the family of Marie Adelaide was forced to leave Germany. Alfred's older brother, Duke Ernst, became the new king of Hanover. According to Salic law, a woman couldn't inherit the throne in Hanover, so with the accession of Victoria, the throne in Germany passed to her eldest uncle. Duke Alfred and his family returned to England. At first, they lived in Kensington Palace and then in Kew Palace. The princess was educated at home, where she was taught more about court etiquette, music and housekeeping. Maria Adelaide was a lively and frisky child. She didn't inherit her mother's beauty and had been very plump since childhood. Therefore, in the royal family, the girl was considered ugly, and later she even received the offensive nickname Fat Mary from her relatives. But the princess was friendly and cheerful, easily found a common language with everyone and freely communicated with ordinary people. By the way, Queen Victoria was Maria Adelaide's cousin, since their fathers were brothers. When the princess grew up, her mother began to look for a groom for her, especially after Augusta married her eldest daughter. That's just the case with the groom somehow didn't work out. Most of the noble applicants considered Maria Adelaide unattractive and too corpulent. Therefore, having met her personally, they didn't dare to propose to her. The matter was also complicated by the fact that the princess herself didn't want to leave her homeland and go to live in a foreign country. And the dowry for the girl was given very modest. Therefore, in different years, Maria Adelaide's possible engagements with the Prince of Sweden, the Prince of Belgium and the King of Italy went wrong. As the years passed, there were fewer and fewer suitors. Therefore, by the age of 32, Maria Adelaide was still unmarried which was why her mother was very worried. In the end, the relatives gave up on the princess, considering her a cheerful spinster. But suddenly, a miracle happened. The princess met with the son of the Austrian Duke of Württemberg, Prince Franz of Teck. Prince Edward of the Wells introduced the couple in the spring of 1866 in London, who wanted to help his great-aunt find a husband. No one expected anything from this acquaintance anymore. But suddenly the couple liked each other. They had a lot in common. They both loved to play music and draw. In addition, Franz was considered one of the most attractive men at the Austrian court. Like a real military man, the prince decided not to postpone the matter, and a month after they met, he proposed to Maria the Late. Obviously, the princess fell madly in love with the tall and stately Franz and immediately agreed to marry him. But unfortunately, the prince was considered insufficiently noble by the standards of the British aristocracy and on a very modest income. The fact is that his father was in a morganatic unequal marriage with a beautiful Hungarian aristocrat who didn't have royal blood, counting Claudine de Kishred. From this marriage, France was born. The calm officer, with impeccable manners, had sunk into the prince's heart so much that she begged her cousin to let them get married. Despite the unequal position of the lovers, Queen Victoria nevertheless graciously agreed to the marriage, realizing that there would most likely be no more applicants for the hand of Maria Adelaide. Before the wedding, handsome friends resigned from the ranks of the Austrian army and moved to live in London. And in the summer of 1866, the happy couple got married. 
The bride was 32 years old and the groom was 29. The couple settled in Richmond Park, and after a short time, the princess became pregnant. Her royal family couldn't believe the news, and then everyone was worried whether Maria Adelaide would be able to safely give birth to her first child at the age of 33, due to her age and strong fullness. But everything went fine, and in the spring of 1867, a strong girl, Maria, was born to the couple. The bright hopes for family happiness that I had before our wedding, I'm very grateful that they were fully realized. Because we're very happy and are as close-knit and devoted a couple as our friends can wish. From a letter from Maria the Late, December 31, 1866, Memoirs of the Duchess Textual. The couple didn't stop at one child. Subsequently, Maria the Late has three more healthy sons. It was a strong and happy union. The princess devoted a lot of time to her children, although at that time it was not accepted among the nobility. At the same time, she raised her children in a strict atmosphere. In 1871, France received the title of Duke of Tech, and his wife became a Duchess. France and Maria de Laide led a cheerful lifestyle and mutual understanding reigned between them. The only thing that hindered the couple's complete deal was the constant lack of money. They loved to live in a big way, give luxurious receptions and relax in Italy and France in the summer. They also both loved beautiful and expensive outfits and delicious food. And it's not surprising that with such a wasteful lifestyle, the family quickly got into debt. The most interesting thing is that Maria de Late was the main breadwinner. She received a decent allowance from her mother and from Queen Victoria. No matter how the Duchess asked to increase her cousin's allowance, Victoria invariably refused her. Although the Queen has allocated the family apartment in Kensington Palace and a beautiful country house. In 1883, the couple even had to flee England due to huge debts. They lived in Europe for several years, moving from one relative to another, after a while the couple returned to England. There Maria the Late long south from the Queen the title his Royal Highness for her beloved husband, but Victoria granted France only the title His Highness in 1887. And if such subtleties mean nothing to us, then for the aristocracy of those times, titles were of enormous importance. Maria the Late devoted a lot of time to charity, the Duchess of Tech opened schools for children, hospitals and shelters for the poor. She patronized a huge number of charitable organizations. Always cheerful, responsive and easy to communicate, she was so popular among the British that she even received a nickname the People's Princess. And in 1891, real luck smiled on the family. Their daughter, Maria, was chosen by Queen Victoria to be the bride for her grandson and heir to the throne, Prince Albert. The Duchess and her husband were jubilant when the couple's engagement took place, but only one and a half month after the engagement, the groom suddenly died of pneumonia. Since the Queen liked the sensible and calm Marie very much, she advised Albert's younger brother and the next heir to the throne, George, to pay attention to her. And soon the business of the young people improved, and Maria of Tech became the bride of the next heir. After that, the financial situation of the family of the Dukes of Tech improved dramatically, and in the summer of 1893, the magnificent wedding of Mary and Prince George took place. For the bride's parents, it was a day of real triumph. Maria the Late managed to see the first grandchildren of her only daughter. Unfortunately, Maria the Late didn't live to see her daughter ascend to the throne, as she died in the autumn of 1897 from the consequences of an unsuccessful operation. She was 63 years old. Despite her unusual appearance and overweight, the Duchess lived a very happy life. No wonder they say, don't be born beautiful, but be born happy. The Duchess husband outlived her by three years. France was so worried about the loss of his beloved wife, that in the following years he retired to his house and refused to attend public events. The Duke died in 1900 at the age of 62. Two of the couple's three sons married and left offspring, and their daughter Mary became Queen Consort of England in 1910, and then the grandmother of the famous Elizabeth II. 